The fourth video in this series on state-space feedback looks at Ackerman's approach. Previous videos then showed how state feedback can be used to place pulse precisely as long as the system is fully controllable. So what we're saying is that as long as A and B are fully controllable, then you can find a state feedback K to place the poles of A minus B K wherever you want. And we've shown a transformation method and uh, a method using control canonical forms. But both of those methods implicitly relied on a control canonical form at some point. This video is going to show an alternative approach to state feedback which does not resort to canonical forms at any time within the design procedure. So, this remark is quite important. Much of this video derives and explains the result. I'm a big believer that it's important that students understand where results have come from rather than just using them. However, there is some involved algebra, so if you only want to know the result, you might want to skip to somewhere about two-thirds of the way through this video. The approach here relies on clear definitions of two polynomials. The open loop pole polynomial, here I've used the terminology PO of open loop, is given with coefficients A. And then the closed loop polynomial, and emphasize here the desired closed loop pole polynomial, that's the one that you want. Then you'll see I've used C for closed loop, and I've given it coefficients alpha. So you can distinguish quickly between open loop and closed loop. The Cayley-Hamilton theorem. A matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation. So what you need to know is if the characteristic equation of a matrix A is given by lambda to the n plus a n to the minus 1, lambda to the n minus 1, all the way down to a0, then if you substitute the matrix A in for lambda, you will get 0. So you'll see here, I've written a to the n plus a n minus 1, capital A to the n minus 1 and so on, I must get 0. So that's what the Cayley-Hamilton theorem tells you. And I'm not going to give a proof here, but it's relatively straightforward and available elsewhere. But it's a key part of Ackerman's approach, use of this theorem. Now, the following two identities are known to be true, therefore, that if the open loop pole polynomial is given with coefficients a n minus 1, then from Cayley Hamilton, I substitute in the matrix capital A and I will get 0. In a similar way, if the closed loop pole polynomial is given with coefficients alpha, then if I substitute in the closed loop pole polynomial, which also a closed loop state transition matrix, which is A minus BK, then I will get 0. Now, why is this important? Because it says if I can find a K such that this identity down here is true, then that k must be one which gives me the closed loop poles that I want because it's satisfying Cayley-Hamilton with the coefficients which give me the poles that I want. So that's the key thing. So what we're going to ask is can we find k to satisfy this expression at the bottom. So that's the, basically the premise behind Cayley Hamilton. Can, so not Cayley Hamilton, behind Ackerman. Can I find a K which satisfies this identity? Now the intention is to exploit the latter of those identities and also to exploit the full rank nature of the controllability matrix. So let's do some definitions. This, pol this polynomial, and it's a matrix polynomial, PC of A minus BK, you see has got an A minus BK to the N term, an A minus BK to the N minus 1 term, and so on. Now, if I wanted it, I could also do PC of A, and that would be A to the N all the way down to alpha 1 A alpha 0 times I. And what you'll see is that we're going to exploit the fact that we've got a PC of A term and a PC of A minus BK. And there's key difference between these two, which is this, that if you do PC of A minus BK, you're going to get zero, assuming that K gives you the closed loop poles that you want. But when you substitute in the matrix A, you will not get zero. So what are we going to do next with Ackerman's approach? First thing to do is expand P 
PC of A minus BK and have a look at the underlying structure. So let's do it one term at a time. So if I look at the term A minus BK to the power N, then it's fairly clear to see you're going to get an A to the N minus A to the N minus 1 BK all the way down to minus 1 to the N minus 1 A BK to the N minus 1. And then you're also going to get a whole series of other terms where B is the leading parameter, and I'm not actually going to expand those terms, which is why I've just used this expression Fn to say that there is another set of terms in there, but we're not going to be using them. If I look at A minus BK to the N minus 1, you're going to get a very similar expansion. A to the N minus 1 minus A to the N minus 2 BK, all the way down to a minus 1 to the N minus 2 A BK to the N minus 2. And again, I'm going to get terms which have a leading beta, uh, sorry, leading B, and some function Fn minus 1, which I don't need to define. And I can carry on doing the same thing. And finally, I'll get down to a minus bk squared, which gives me a squared minus abk plus bka, and I forgot a key point here, plus bk squared. And of course, the final one, a minus bk. Now, what's the key observation? Why have I taken so long looking at these expansion? You'll see I've very deliberately separated the terms which have a leading a and the terms which have a leading B. So if I draw a line here, like this, you'll see all the terms on the right have a leading B, and all the terms on the left have a leading A. And I'm only going to be looking at the terms with a leading A. And you'll see why in a minute, because all the terms with a leading B are essentially going to disappear. So the next step is to show that you can express each of those terms using the controllability matrix. So here we go. I'll start with the top one. You'll see we had a to the n and minus a to the n minus 1 bk and so on, all the way down to this minus 1 to the n b times fn of a and bk. Now the interesting point is you'll see I've got an a to the n term, which comes straight from there. I've got an a to the n minus 1 b term, which I'm going to put here, and that multiplies k. So that k is there. If I go all the way to the right, you'll see I've got here, but I better use a blue color, minus 1 to the n minus 1, a, b, k. And you'll see that one is going to be this term here, a, b. And that's going to multiply this term here, minus 1 to the n minus 1, k, b, k to the n minus 2. Now, what do you notice about the pattern? All these terms in between have got the values that appear in the controllability matrix. So I've got AB times something, A squared B times something, AQB times something, all the way up to A to the N minus 1 B times something. And then the final term is this one at the end, the one which has the leading B. So that corresponds to this term here. You'll see the leading B multiplies that term. So why is this important? Because it means that I've written my expression as a to the n plus mc times vn. Now, you don't need to worry too much about what's inside this vector vn. The most important thing is that I've, I've been able to write my expansion as the controllability matrix times a vector. And that vector has lots of terms in it. I can do a similar thing with all the other powers. So here, for example, I'm illustrating a minus bk cubed. So you see I get an a cubed term, which I can separate out. I get an a squared b term, which will multiply k. I get an a b term, which will multiply something. And I get a b term, which will multiply something. So again, you notice I can write this expression as a cubed plus mc times v3. However, there's an important difference between this example and the previous examples. The highest power over here is a squared bk. And therefore, all of these terms multiply a 0. 
And therefore, even though I've included the whole controllability matrix, a lot of those terms are multiplying zeros. And so where's the key conclusion? You've got zeros as the bottom rows of this vector V3. So next, expand PC of A minus BK and unpack all the underlying structures. So what we're going to do is use what we've done on the previous slide. So we've said A minus BK to the power N can be written as A to the N plus MC times some vector VN. A to the minus BK N minus 1 is A to the N minus 1 plus the controllability matrix times some vector VN minus 1. And I can follow that pattern down all the way down to A minus BK is A plus the controllability matrix times some vector V1. But here's the key point. Only one of those vectors Vn is non-zero in the bottom row. So all the others, V1, V2, all the way up to Vn minus 1, are zero in the bottom row. Now what I'm going to do is take these expressions and substitute them into my PC of A minus B. So you'll notice I've got an A minus BK to the N, and I've got an A minus BK to the N minus 1, and so on. So if I do that substitution, this is what you get. I get A to the N plus alpha N minus 1, A to the N minus 1, all the way across to alpha naught to the I. So that's all these leading terms here, all these powers of A. And then I look at all the terms that multiply by the controllability matrix. So I've got MC times VN. MC times alpha N minus 1, VN minus 1, all the way down to MC times alpha 1, V1. So you see there's a nice separation, a nice structure in this equation. So now let's have a look at this equation again. So I've just restated it here. And the key thing is that you can see that PC of A is a component of PC of A minus BK. And precisely, you can see that this part here is PC of A. And we're going to exploit that because we recognized earlier on that PC of A minus BK is 0. So I can write here equals 0. But PC of A was not 0. So therefore, I can rewrite this expression as this, naught equals PC of A plus this controllability matrix times the sum of all these vectors. Now, I can rearrange this basically by bringing MC to the other side, and you see MC inverse times PC of A equals the weighted sum of all these vectors. And you remember, we did emphasize the system had to be fully controllable, so we assumed that MC is invertible. So one last step now, and then we get to the end. So now what we're going to do is exploit the structure of Vn. You remember that Vn was the only one of these vectors which had a non-zero bottom row, and that happened to be minus k. And you remember k is the feedback gain that we want to find. So what we're going to do is multiply or pre-multiply by this vector here, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, because that will extract the bottom row only. So if I multiply Vn minus 1 by that, I get 0. If I multiply Vn minus 2 by that, I get 0. But if I do 0, 0, dot, 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 1 times Vn, then I'm going to get minus k. So this vector allows me to extract the k which I'm interested in. And therefore, this is what you get. 0, 0, 0, 1 times MC inverse times PC of A equals K. So you've got an exact definition for the state feedback that you're looking for. And satisfaction of this equation implicitly assumes that you've satisfied all these alphas. You've satisfied PC of A minus BK equals 0. So as PC is by definition, then you can find the required state feedback using this formula. So, a summary of Ackerman's approach. Define your desired closed loop pole polynomial using these coefficients, alpha n minus 1 to alpha 0, and then the required feedback is given from the following formula, where MC is the controllability matrix. So very few steps. The key thing is that you're going to have to invert the controllability matrix, and you're going to have to work out 
what PC of A is. Some examples then. You're giving you here an A matrix, a B matrix and a C matrix and I want poles at minus 1 and minus 2. So the first thing to do is find the required pole polynomial and there it is s squared plus 3s plus 2 has the required poles. Next step let's find out what PC of A is. So you'll see I've done A squared, I've done 3A and I've done plus 2 times i. So essentially I've substituted a into the closed loop pole polynomial and there's the answer down here. I'm not going to bother doing that more slowly. You can pause the video if you want to check those calculations are correct. So that's restating my PC of a. Next I need to find the controllability matrix. So it's given as b times ab and here it is. I've done the calculation for you. You can do it more slowly if you like. And then finally just plug this into Ackerman's formula. So I just do 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 times MC inverse times PC of A, multiply that all out, gives me K, and here is the answer. So you can see in terms of steps, it's relatively straightforward, though of course the underlying algebra could be quite tedious. And here's some MATLAB code to demonstrate how easy that is. So you see, first of all, I found the controllability matrix, controllability of AB. I've worked out what PC of A is, and you'll see here I've got the coefficient 3 and the coefficient 2, and then I've used Ackerman's formula to do K, and then I've um, that's a check which I've not given the answer to, but you can see the steps are very simple and very quick to code. Here's a different example. This one, 3 by 3, to be a little bit more complicated, so I want to place three poles. So first then, find the required pole polynomial, and there it is, it's got coefficients of 3, 2.75, 0.75, so I work out PC of A. Now, that means I need A cubed plus 3A squared plus 2.75A plus 0.75A, and you'll notice the key point, I've used MATLAB because this really is getting tedious, and if you want to do that by hand, I would say good luck to you. Next step then, we need to find the controllability matrix. So that's given by B, A, B, A squared, B. And again, this is somewhat tedious to do by hand, so I've given you the result here. And finally, just plug the numbers in to Ackerman's formula, and out comes the corresponding K. So in summary, we introduce concepts of pole placement state feedback when you do not have a control canonical form. And we've shown that assuming full controllability, you can use Ackerman's formula to define the required feedback to achieve any desired pole polynomial. And there's the formula. You'll see you've got the controllability, the inverse of the controllability matrix times PC of the matrix A, and you take the bottom row, and that gives you the state feedback K. In general, this is not a paper and pen exercise as it involves substantial matrix multiplication and inversion. And a warning, it can be numerically poor, poorly conditioned if your controllability matrix is poorly conditioned or if you've got a large dimensional system.